without a camera at this stage. Are we recording? My embarrassing entree? We're, we just started. You're good. Awesome. Okay, welcome everyone to this um, Community Advisory Board meeting for April 15th, 2020. Hope you are all safe and well, uh, you and yours. Uh, we're going to kick off with uh, our regular Cloud Foundry Foundation highlights and updates from, I believe, uh, Swarna. I see we have Chip as well. Welcome our new executive director. Hey, hey, how y'all doing? Good, good. I promised uh, Abby I wouldn't break anything. <laughs> I, 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 we won't let you, we won't let you. Good man. On that note, do you want to do today's honors, Chip? Uh, yeah, let's see, would you, would you add in here? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so it's in the in the doc, right? We um, we uh, had a change at the board of directors level, um, and just I, I'm always reminded that um, some context about what the foundation's board does is important. Um, they're responsible for uh, helping to manage the the business of the corporation that is the Cloud Foundry Foundation. So um, they approve the annual budget. Um, they you know, work, we work very closely with all the directors and um, you know, the board as a whole to establish what the priorities for how we're gonna, the staff will spend its time um, supporting the community. Um, they help set those priorities for us. Um, the, you know, I've said this in other contexts, but I'll, I just wanna maybe reiterate what, what we're going to be focused on um, in support of everything that you all do um, is really two, two key things. So the first one is that um, we're going to be very focused on trying to find ways to help the community grow um, and continue to to build on. It's a fairly healthy community, right? Um, we've got decent diversity, um, but we can do more. We can do better, right? So, um, you know, Swarna and Chris, as an example, have started to reach out to to different project leads, um, to PMC leads, to say, you know, how can we think about the projects? Um, being more welcoming for casual contribution. Um, I think that's a, that's a key ingredient that we haven't been doing uh, particularly well as a collective. Um, so there's, there's areas to improve. Um, and we wanna be there to support you know, everybody in, in making some changes there. Um, and the second area of, of focus for us is to, is to really simplify any of the, you know, the marketing or the out outreach that we do to focus on um, a very straightforward story. Right, we as a community um, have a long experience providing a great developer-centric experience um, to enterprise developers everywhere. And now that Kubernetes is showing up everywhere, we need to bring that developer experience to Kube. And you know, regardless of what Kube distribution or um, you know cloud provider offering you're using, um, there's there's a you know pretty significant gap between enterprise developer and Kubernetes. So um, that's, that's what we're going to do around uh, outreach activities. So we're kind of, we're simplifying what we do to support all of you. Um, we're we're going to be very, very focused on those two activities. And um, I, I think that that's incredibly appropriate given the, um, the state of the, the project overall, right? Commercialization is fairly successful. Um, we've got alignment around that, that Kubernetes direction, um, even as we work out, uh, you know, lots of details and, and have really healthy discussions, you know, in the community. Um, so that's where we're at. Uh, let's see what else is in here. <clears throat> um, okay, let, let's actually hit the, uh, the summit. Um, we haven't officially done any announcement around this yet, but the North American summit is like 99.9% .9 likely. Um, it's gonna be virtual. We're gonna change the format dramatically. Um, we're gonna focus on the two audiences that we still plan to focus on uh, for an in-person event, um, which is number one, contributing community. Number two, um, those members of our community that are kind of in that, in that circle around the core contributors, right? So casual contributors, um, uh, SIs that do a lot of integration deployment work and app modernization, um, end users that, that are either using the open source directly or um, uh, even though they, you know, they, they acquire the platform through a vendor, they're interested and active in, in the upstream community. So 
that's what we're going to try to create virtually. Um, we're going to work very closely with the Linux Foundation events team. They've, they've done a lot of work on, on different platforms and tools to use for this. Um, and we're going to do our best to try to create something that's not just people staring at a Zoom screen all day, because I think that's our lives anyway, right? Um, so, you know, how do we, how do we make something that's uh, going to hopefully provide um, not just a chance for great talks to be highlighted and then reused, um, but ideally, you know, the value of any event is in, you know, the hallway track or you know, another way to look at it is the serendipitous moment of collaboration that you wouldn't expect otherwise. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to experiment. We're going to try some new things. Um, so we'll have more information about that coming shortly. In terms of the European event, who knows at this point? Um, we're going to focus on getting North America right. Um, we'll see what happens, um, you know, with the with the, the state of the world and travel and everybody's um, feelings of safety around travel. Um, and then we'll, we'll see what happens. So I don't think I have anything else. Swarna, did I miss anything critical? No, uh, I think uh, that was more compass. Sorry, Troy. Cool. Uh, I was just gonna say CFP deadline. Yeah, we pushed that out, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this Friday. Yeah, we, yeah, I mean, the people are focused on their families and their health um, yeah. and, and their day jobs as primary topics. So. We've pushed that out a bit, um, so yeah. It's, please do submit because we're still going to find ways to use your great talks. Yeah, it's technically this Friday, but uh, given the whole new format change that is kind of still in the works, I I don't want to speak for the entire team, but um, I think we will push that out a little more because it, there's no point in closing the call for papers before we announce the format change. So that might stay open for a little while, but uh, we'll keep the community posted. Are we still aiming for the 25th or would that date change as well? You, you know, <clears throat> my, my take is that if we assume there's any type of audience overlap between the broader open source summit, which would go virtual as well, because we're going to co-locate, um, that sounds very hard to just tack it onto the week. Um, but I, I don't know. We, ha we haven't figured that part out yet, Eric. But that's a really good question, and it's one of the top questions I've got. <laughs> so we'll try to come up with a good answer around that that respects everybody, um, you know, the effort it takes to, to participate in something virtually. Yeah, the board members um, highlighted, you know, um, a day with people on site, like, seems feasible if they're on site, but a whole day of content um, with people off site seems less feasible um, as far as keeping them engaged. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just one last thing on the content part. Uh, I know we here, I think in one of the previous call, calls, we were discussing how to make sure that we provide the context for the whole integrations with Kubernetes. So one of the first attempts that we did was kind of like the redoing the home page so i would love for at least eric yui and troy in particular but even the broader community to take a look at that and just see if that makes sense and then from there we uh, i mean the home page kind of makes sense and from there we are gonna have a little more detail into how these different projects kind of play into that yeah i i saw the change um with those three projects highlighted quite well. Um, it looked great. Um, I think we need some uh, cross references between uh, CF for K8s and kubectl so people know which is which when they land on one page or the other. Uh, see a sort of a see also sort of thing. Uh, I'm working with Sai on that and uh, I'll be working with the docs team on something in the docs.cloudfoundry.org to point people in the right direction if that's if that's how they're uh, discovering it. Cool. Uh, did, uh, did we talk about uh, uh, Paul taking the chairmanship and Google joining? Any words about that? Um, yeah, I, I did mention Paul, um, I think, unless I skipped over that when I explained what the board is. But yeah, um, yeah so Paul Fazone uh, from VMware um, got elected to chair the board. And again, that's about the business management of the, the corporation. Um, uh, John Rose, uh, who's the Dell, uh, Dell Technologies CTO, has been doing that since 2015. Um, 
and so it, uh, it seemed like a good good opportunity for him to uh, to free up free up some cycles. He's off doing other things right now. Um, <clears throat> And what was the other one, Troy? That was Paul. And Google. Uh, yeah, Google Google did upgrade. So we have uh, Jen Phillips, who, who works at Google's open source office, join the board to represent Google. Excellent. Uh, is that any indication of maybe wider involvement from Google engineers? Um, I, I would, the way I would say this is that, um, I, you know, Google's recent focus on uh, the enterprise has led them to see that Cloud Foundry is very important in the large enterprise to quite a lot of these these big companies. And so demonstrating at least financial support um, seems material to their customer acquisition uh, and retention strategy. Um, beyond that, you know, not sure. Okay. I was I was just kind of hoping that we could get some of the effort that went into projects like KF uh, involved in our Kubernetes efforts, uh, sort of in with the rest of us, uh, instead of being surprised by them. Yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> the reality is that um, every company is going to surprise the other companies, uh, whether you're involved <laughs> in the foundation or not. Right? <laughs> it's just what it's what you all need to do commercially. Um, you know, I I think the answer to this is uh, Troy the 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 continued push towards um, rapidly getting a really robust set of options for for you know great dev experience on top of Kubernetes is something that Google is paying a lot of attention to. A lot of companies are paying a lot of attention to. Um, so the more we we push on that, and the more we focus on ensuring that the uh, the you know the projects are prepared for new contributors, uh, the more likely it is that that you know diversity will continue to to grow. Cool. Okay, thanks for that. We should uh, probably move on to the uh, 18 minutes past. We should probably move on if there are no objections to PMC updates. And I see we have Eric here. Yeah, thanks, Troy. Uh, I'll run through these real fast because uh, we're pretty far in. Uh, some highlights, um, the release integration team released version 0 0.1 of CF for Kates. Uh, and they've also been working on refining the uh, change criteria for CF deployment version 13. Uh, I know kubectl has been integrating some of the more uh, Kubernetes-centric deployment options uh, for Irene and UAA into um, their set of resources for deployment instead of relying on the Bosch releases. So that's exciting to see that move forward too. Um, supporting that uh, CF Recates version 0.1 release, CAPI has completed that initial integration with KPAC to run cloud-native build packs for staging tasks. I think they've been doing some uh, work to integrate uh, their current stats D metrics into something that's Prometheus compatible uh, with the Logregator team. And um, uh, one other thing uh, I think that's uh, potentially exciting along that Kubernetes trajectory is that uh, the networking team has been working on uh, more deliberate CRDs to represent CF routes. Uh, and they're also moving forward with their exploration and work on supporting app security groups via Kubernetes constructs such as network policy. Uh, so there's a couple other items in the um, uh, CAB agenda journal, but I think we can move on from there. Okay, excellent. Uh, if, have we got anyone to represent Bosch? Nicole, I haven't looked at our attendee list. Don't think so. Okay. Then I'll just mention quickly uh, proxy some remarks from the Quarks team. They've got uh, release 4.3.1 out. Um, and there's been a lot of flux in the CF operator to accommodate the changes in kubectl to start consuming Helm charts rather than Bosch releases, or, or as in addition to Bosch releases. So there are break, some breaking changes between uh, uh, the Quarks operator and and kubectl. They they're they're now uh, getting back in sync for the for the current releases. Uh, anyone from the Stratos team here? Richard Cox mentioned he might join. Richard, anything to say about uh, three point one or three point zero? 
Uh, yeah, I can I can very very briefly talk you through some of the features. Um, I can demo them as well if you wish. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, in in, th in Stratus 3.0, um, which is rather the big thing for us. Most of it was under the hood, but some of the things that are visual to users is the upgrade to Angular 8, um, where we basically uh, the big thing there is differential loading, um, so which should improve Stratos in older browsers. Um, other things we've done, um, Cloud Foundry applications, we can deploy those via Docker Image now, along with um, Public Git, Public Git Lab, um, or File Archive. Those are the older ones, but Docker Image is the new one. Um, users can view Cloud Foundry events at the Cloud Foundry org and space level. Um, if you uh, don't have a UAA as well, now we have a quick way to get uh, Stratos up and running, um, where you can specify some credentials for a single user. Um, that is your single user, is your admin for that, for that Stratos lifetime. Um, that's good for just testing or yeah, if people just want to quickly dem demo it or, or see what it's about. Um, we've also improved error reporting. So now users can um, review specific errors uh, in, um, in the console um, and then kind of ignore those if they wish, which removes all of the kind of the warnings. Um, and that's also good for demos. And um, finally in, in 3.0, um, no UI is really complete without a dark mode. So now we have um, a Stratos dark mode. Um, and in 3.1, which hasn't been released yet, but we, we've done an RC today, so hopefully that'll be out within the next week. Um, and in there, we've basically made a lot of improvements to scaling. Um, we've had some feedback from various um, users, specifically Comcast. They were talking a lot about how they had um, a lot of entities, a lot of uh, users, a lot of orgs. Um, so now in uh, we've improved the way that the lists uh, that we have to present those, we handle lots of, of, um, lots of entities and uh, one of the big things also for the cloud.gov team uh, they're interested in adding users uh, we already have the ability to invite users to organizations by email um, but they also wanted a way for org managers to um, assign roles to people who were outside of their organization um, this was it gets a bit tricky for various reasons um, but we've now added a way for basically anyone with the correct permissions to edit roles via their username um, so maybe if they can't see them in, in the list we present, they can still change those roles, again, if they cool. have the permissions. Uh, another community feedback, uh, well, community one was, uh, we've disabled logging of Jetstream API requests, um, optionally. Uh, that could be a bit spammy in, the, in, in our backend logs, so we can now disable those. Um, we've updated the way that the Cloud Foundry deploy works, uh, so, or just sorry, deploying applications. So that now supports all the latest V3 features, such as multiple build packs, um, and a few small nice ones, we've support now uh, the use of Gravatar for uh, user profile icons. So if enabled, then, um, then the user can see their own, their own icon in the top right. Um, and finally, we can edit endpoints. So if, you've, if you put a typo in when you've added a, a Cloud Foundry, um, you can now edit that name. Um, and awesome. again, yeah, 3.1 will be out very soon. Cool. We, we don't actually have time for a Stratos demo today, so we're going to uh, go ahead. We do have two uh, community project presentations lined up. I um, have one, one question about Stratos. Oh, sure. um, I, I wondered if um, it had support for, for log cache? Uh, not yet. I think that is on our roadmap. I mean, we do, we do present logging in the old way, if I remember the way that logging is done, um, but we do need to update. OK. I know um, at least the way it's implemented for CF for Kate's um, that it's in this new way as opposed to the old way and so you won't uh you won't you might not get logs if if you're only doing it the old way yeah I, I'll, I'll talk to, to neil um and i think it is on our roadmap somewhere um i'm not sure where on the stack it is um but yeah it's currently the old way okay. thanks cheers thanks for the heads up uh the other only other extensions update was a proposal for a CF backup plugin. Again, that, that comes from Sousa. Uh, follow the link in the agenda if you want to find out more about that uh, proposal. Uh, I want to leave uh, plenty of time for the uh, project's presentations. Uh, Steve, are you ready to present? Um, Yep. Your stuff about the CFF tutorials. Yep. I'm going to share the screen. Cool. Can you see that?
we all can. Okay, uh, thanks. Yeah, so Troy asked me to come in and just talk about uh, some of the work that we've been doing behind the scenes uh, to build up a new uh, tutorial site for kind of Cloud Foundry and Cloud Foundry related tutorials. Um, so this is actually live now, um, hasn't officially been announced, but we're introducing it so that uh, you all can start kind of taking a look and poking and prodding at things. So I will go through this relatively quickly um, and show you kind of some of the, I think, uh, interesting parts. Um, but our goal here is really to collect and curate um, a set of tutorials that are uh, kind of easily consumable, you know, short in nature um, for various relevant audiences. You know, it doesn't really matter what the what the topics are, but I think we do a great job of documenting the platform. Uh, we've got some very good long form, I think, uh, training out there across different companies, but I think as a community, we could do better at um, introducing people to kind of core concepts and, and doing some of those things quickly. And that's that's really what our aim is here. Um, so you can start poking around at this. It's out at uh, tutorials.cloudfoundry.org. <clears throat> um, we've been building some of the backend infrastructure to support this. And I'll show you um, what some of that looks like here in a second, as well as some of the initial content. But our goal here is really for people to get involved. So if you have ideas, if you have thoughts, if you want to you know, make a quick tutorial, a 15 minute thing, a 10 minute thing, even, a, you know, maybe up to about a 30 minute uh, thing on some particular topic that you think would be relevant. Um, please jump in Slack, get in touch. Uh, let me know what that is. Um, we're taking on the onus of, of kind of maintaining and making sure that, you know, all of this stuff is, is kept up to date um, and all of that. So um, I'll leave time for questions, but just to kind of give you an idea of what's in here now and what's going to be in here for launch in the next few weeks. Um, currently, there is not a section on what is called Foundry. I'm working on that um, behind the scenes, but that will be here for the launch. And so we really want to give people a good understanding, a really quick overview of what this thing is and why it matters. Because I think we've seen over the course of the entire project that people just getting started with Cloud Foundry is one of the biggest impediments. They just don't understand how to start with it because there's so many different parts and pieces. Um, we are addressing this whole you know, question of Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes um, here. This is still actively being worked, but there is a draft that's out there that you're, you're welcome to take a look at. Um, for any of, the, any of you that have seen uh, the Tri Cloud Foundry stuff that we've put out previously, so tricloudfoundry.com, We've actually moved that in here um, in a tutorial format um, and it walks you through kind of getting a Cloud Foundry instance or getting an account on an existing Cloud Foundry instance and, you know, the basics of deploying an app and, um, you know, logging in and targeting that whole thing, provisioning databases, scaling, killing, all that fun stuff. Um, that is in here, but we still felt that that was a little bit of a too high of an impediment because you got to go pick a provider and then you got to figure out how to actually get an account, how to sign up and all this other stuff, right? Um, and so what we wanted to do is actually make that a seamless process. And we ended up doing that on Catacoda. Um, and so this is kind of no small feat um, behind the scenes. And this is, I think, why, why Troy asked me to come in and kind of show this initially. But We've implemented this on Catacoda, and if you haven't used it before, it is basically an integrated learning environment where we actually have a real terminal window running over here, and it's typically hooked up to live systems. And so when you do Catacoda um, training, like if you were doing, let's say, some form of Kubernetes training, behind the scenes, they'll typically spin up a mini cube instance for you and hook it up to your browser. Um, for us, that model doesn't work great with Cloud Foundry because the installs take a while. Um, so what we ended up doing was actually provisioning a kubectl cluster on GCP um, and basically hooking that up behind the scenes. And so um, it's the same tutorial, but when I actually start this tutorial, I actually have um, a Cloud Foundry instance. I actually have an organ of space. I have a username. I'm already authenticated and everything is basically hooked up and ready to go. There are still some um, kind of, I don't know, rough parts of Catacoda. I don't know if you know the history, but they've been acquired by O'Reilly and things have been getting better. It's a really good platform, but you know, some of these things are unfortunately things we have to live with. 
But the idea here is anybody can actually go through the entire tutorial of actually using Cloud Foundry and pushing applications against a real running instance. Um, again, it's running on kubectl. Uh, right now, the uh, kubectl is relatively small. We're waiting for the next release to basically update behind the scenes. Um, and the way that this all works is, you know, essentially you launch your Catacoda session. Um, we're making some calls out to an API that's actually doing the provisioning behind the scenes. And after about 30 minutes, whatever that account is, will essentially just get destroyed and reaped uh, because we fully expect and understand that this kubectl instance is going to get messed with. Um, and, you know, people are going to poke at it and try to do Bitcoin mining and all that fun stuff. So we, we've put some things in place to constantly repave and uh, update URLs and replace things. But um, there's actually no way for you to go in here and get the username or, or to get the password. Sorry, not the username. Uh, to do anything kind of major with this with this anyway, but again, it takes them through the whole process of deploying an application of binding services of um, Scaling the application killing the application, you know, and that that whole kind of tri cloud foundry thing with basically no barrier of entry You just need a browser that Catacoda works um, So that's primarily what I wanted to show you um, Please do jump in and start looking around um, and if you have ideas on content you want to add, um, you know, please jump in Slack. There's a Slack channel um, and, and reach out to me and let me know. Uh, we've got kind of all the infrastructure stuff behind the scenes, so you don't need to worry about any of that. You can basically just write some markdown and uh, we should be good to go. So I will pause there. That's incredible, Steve. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to do a big push on this from the CF website? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chip, and, and yeah. end of April. Awesome. The, uh, the, the next uh, demo um, is, is what we're going to focus on next week. And then the week after, we'll get tutorials.cf.org out. I'm wondering, Steve, if for any of our more engaged like operators, like Comcast, um, Fidelity UK, if if they'd be good people to give give you feedback on if this made sense in their organization to, to make it easier to try it out. Sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think a lot of what you'll find here that's in there now is really aimed at the getting started type stuff. So it might not be relevant for them. Um, but we wanted to really kind of tackle the, the barrier of entry issue that I think we hear about on Twitter a lot. So, oh, and incidentally, um, the intention is also to offer this whole tri cloud foundry experience on Stratos, um, because it's, I actually do work on the cloud.gov team part time as well. And, uh, we have a lot of users that, that just do everything through the UI and we want to support that as well. So cool. So that is coming also. <clears throat> But feel free to, if, if there are people that you think would be valuable in feedback, please definitely share the information. Excellent. The, the other thing I'd just reiterate, um, that Steve already said, but I, I wanna make a really specific re reiteration here. This is an awesome opportunity for projects to think about not just like the formal documentation side, but if you've got a really cool new feature, a quick tutorial might be a great idea. Um, it's a different format, right? It's lighter weight. Um, so, you know, there's, there's been a, a limited number of people that have contributed, but it's on GitHub, right? So <laughs> PR is welcome, please. Um, you know, consider that as, as you're thinking about your project teams. And, and you know, Cy, the, the, um, as the CF for Kate's continues to evolve, right? Um, getting some input into that one tutorial that tries to talk about CF and, and uh, Kubernetes and how the two relate. Um, you know, let, let's, let's keep this thing in mind. So, you know, CF for Kate's is well represented too. Yeah, I just took some notes down. I, Steve, I think I, this is the first time I've seen you. So thank you. This is a great demo. So I've just tried writing down who to talk to and how do I reach out and how can we use that tutorial? So, Yeah, that'd be great. There, there is a mention of CF for Kate's and kubectl in there. Um, 
but again, you know, we're, we're open to whatever, um, you know, if you have thoughts, if you have things you want to add, if you want to add a separate section on CF for Cades, that's perfectly fine too. So I'm whatever thinking, works for everybody, that's what we're here for. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, the CF for Cades versus uh, KubeCF is not as relevant here because the, the user experience should be the same. So I mean, yeah. I do think the operator section maybe makes it, oh, yeah. you know, makes yeah. both sense. There but also sure. these sections are, are, you know, just what we've put in here so far. So we can, we can change this however you want. Yeah, I, I definitely see two sort of uh, sections, one for the operator experience, just like how docs is divided into operator experience and app developer experience, you know. And so if you're an operator, go here and think about some of the, what you need to do. And then the other one is um the actual app developer experience could someone drop a link to the github repo in the chat so we can put it over in the i'll copy it over into the all right or or directly yeah. into the agenda uh under the there we go any more questions for steve thank you steve Thanks, Trey. Cash App, uh, can you tell us uh, what you're doing with BuildPacks? Yes, thanks, Trey. Um, first off, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kashyap, product management uh, manager at VMware on the BuildPack side. Um, we wanted to just take some time to announce the Picado BuildPacks project launch uh, to you folks. I don't have too much like official content prepared. Maybe just um, walk you through the brand new website that the CFF put together, and then answer some questions. Um, so first off, Picado BuildPacks, uh, we're just launching this product uh, as a collection of our uh, implementations of cloud native build packs. Um, a huge motivation behind this launch is sort of tying to a lot of the messaging that Chip said a little earlier around expanding a little bit more broadly um, beyond just the Cloud Foundry community as we expand into Kubernetes and all. Um, and the overall messaging I think we want to get forward with this launch is just that build packs are not just for Cloud Foundry, but for everyone beyond uh, on any, using any cloud native platform. Um, we're planning on launching uh, sometime next week, likely next Tuesday, but uh, we have an FAQ attached to the agenda doc that I can keep updated as we go. Let me share my screen real fast and I could just show you all the brand new site that we have. Uh, one second. Great. So I put the FAQ together yesterday and the CFF um, really polished up the site and I'm really liking how it looks now. Um, so as soon as we launch, we're gonna be supporting Java, .NET Core, Go, Node.js, Nginx, and PHP language families. Um, in the FAQ, we're planning on like adding in roadmap, things like that uh, over the next couple of weeks as soon as we launch. Um, yeah, that's effectively all I had. Uh, maybe we could pause here and just answer some questions around this. I have one. Uh, I hope it's not controversial. Uh, uh, it might be a, a complicated explanation. Um, why are we not doing this under the buildpacks.io site and brand? Um, I mean, it looks great and I'm very happy to have it. And uh, I just was wondering why that isn't happening under that umbrella. Totally. Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, like, I think the biggest question anyone has had uh, so far, we have like, I think the build packs project is a part of the CNCF itself and their whole goal and job is just to build out the overall cloud native build packs specification. Uh, the Picado build packs project is just focused more so on implementing uh, build packs that conform to that specification. We're a little lucky here because we have Steven who's also like a core maintainer of both the um, CNCF build packs project, cloud native build packs project, and also the Picado side. Um, so a huge part of, I think, the website content, FAQ, things like that uh, are more so messaged around um, sort of differentiating the two, because that's a big question we've had. Yeah. 
Okay, that totally makes sense because uh, I was sort of waiting to see some implementations from buildpacks.io for a while. Like, where do you find them? I can see the spec. This, this makes sense to me now. Uh, for the buildpacks.io project, if you have the pack CLI locally and run pack suggest builders, it gives you a list of different um, kind of open source build packs that are out there from contributors to the project. So it lists the CF build packs, which will say potato build packs soon. Um, it also lists Heroku's set of build packs for cloud native build packs. So the that project may do some curation and, and sort of more visibility around build packs that are out there, but it's, it's kind of a, a goal of that project not to, um, you know, say these build packs are better than these, right? It's, it's about just about the specification and tooling and making sure that it's really easy for platforms, any platform to support running build packs. Um, it's, it's also worth, uh, I think, noting that with Pakedo, we, we really want to double down on that kind of vendor neutrality and, um, you know, kind of visible fair governance and, and all of those things, um, you know, that we, we really want to, you know, turn the Picado project into a, you know, something with a much larger community than what Cloud Foundry build packs had in the past. And I think our experiences in the CNCF with cloud native build packs and participating with sort of a lot more companies uh, there really sort of inform that outlook. Yeah, because I, I think your team, uh, Stephen, has shouldered all of the the Cloud Foundry build pack work over the over the years, and it'd be good to get some assistance here. Definitely. Well, after hurrying through all these, uh, we, now we have time. <laughs> any other oh, open questions? Anyone have anything else uh, they want to share? Um, it's Stefan speaking. I have one question uh, <clears throat> regarding build packs. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Do you have any uh, plans or ideas how this new world of CNCF build packs uh, could also be made available uh, in traditional CF deployment um, foundations? So KPEC um, got integrated into Copy. So are there some ways, ideas, plans? Um, I, I can take this one. So the uh, KPEC is being integrated into CF for Kates. And so it'll, it'll be the way that CF for Kates does um, build pack builds in the future. Um, uh, something else we're doing to make sure that exist, you know, existing deployments and people who can't upgrade, you know, to run uh, CF on top of Kubernetes yet. Something else we're doing to make sure that they're very well supported is we're producing this. This will still probably be Cloud Foundry branded instead of Picado branded, um, but we're we're producing sort of shimmed versions of the new build packs that will continue to run on old foundations uh, to make sure people, you know, keep receiving. Um, build pack updates and we don't end up maintaining two generations of build packs. So while the potato build packs are like really modular and kind of fit the new API, like for instance, the node build pack is like node and yarn and yarn install and NPM and, and all these little parts, um, we'll, we'll be releasing a Cloud Foundry compatible build pack that kind of wraps all those together along with the V3 tooling and runs it on top of the V2 <laughs> tooling on Cloud Foundry. It's a kind of surprise we could make that work, but um, the, it won't have some of the performance benefits as if you're running on top of a proper cloud native build packs platform like KPAC or the PAC CLI or whatnot. Um, but it, it should bring a lot of the new, new functionality and features and sort of transparency of the new build pack model back to Cloud Foundry. And so existing Cloud Foundry users should see some benefit there too. Thank you. Yeah, sounds awesome. <laughs> and and uh, you mentioned the performance aspect here. The staging is typically a lot faster with cloud native build packs, correct? Much faster. There like um there's some some apps, especially on rebuilds, take a second or two seconds, even if the build pack has to start a container and run due to the really aggressive layer reuse. Again, those those performance benefits won't show up when you're running yep. the shim versions on Cloud Foundry, but it will show up when you're running with KPAC integrated to CF for Kates or on any other platform that supports cloud native build packs. Yeah. And, and I know this is in the kubectf roadmap. It's just not going to appear as soon as it uh, as it has in in CF for K8s. I think it's there now. Uh, Sai, does this mean that uh, these build packs we just saw on the website are going to be in CF for K8 soon? Yes. So right now we have a one big builder um, that contains all of these build packs. The plan is to work with the Capi team and the Pocato build packs team to have more. 
uh, granular set of build packs uh, configured or uh, declared in the CF4K8 um, resources. So you will individually see each of these build packs. Cool. Any other questions about anything we've covered today? I think um, I was just going to ask Stephen if for the uh, faster rebuilding times, and that was with Containerd versus Docker-based Kates. Yes, that's that's, that's complicated. <laughs> um, the what I was referencing before is just the rebuild time, which doesn't the container runtime doesn't affect um, just the process of generating a new image. Um, if you're deploying, uh, you know, applications. Um, the container runtime, contain, if you're running just container D versus, uh, you know, running the Docker daemon, um, the Docker daemon is bad at pulling, uh, you know, like it'll repull some layers sometimes um, if, if the sort of lower layers have changed, but the, you know, layers above them haven't changed and the cloud native build packs API relies on very fine updating of individual layers in the registry. And so if you do a deployment with Docker, especially at scale after a stack update, um, if you're using a, a, you know, Kates that has a Docker daemon on it uh, and uses that to pull images, then there's, there's a little bit of a performance hit depending on the kind of operation you did. Um, so that, you know, one or two seconds is, is just, just talking about the rebuild time deploy should be very fast on a platform with container D because only the changed layers will get transferred to that, you know, node VM. And even in the case of a stack update, only the changed layers for all of the, you know, containers on the, uh, you know, node VM will get transferred there and everything will kind of flip around. But if you're running a Docker daemon, there are definitely cases where things are a lot more data has to be pulled. Um, the, and I, I, we don't foresee, Docker making any changes to that. So as, as Kate's platforms move to, towards container D, um, the deployment part of the sort of build and deploy process will be faster. Thanks, in short, yeah, sorry. In short, run on container D if you can, it's better. <laughs> yes, agreed. Okay. Um, I think we got through everything in record time. Um, thanks everyone who presented today. Uh, and uh, thanks for all your questions and for being here. And uh, I will see you all again in two weeks. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Yep.